All right, so on your calculator, go to y equals, and we're going to type in sine of x. And then we're going to graph it. Oh, shoot. Yours looks too. I'm going to change mine over here. I don't like clearing mine because then it adjusts the thing. So yours should look something like that, right? Just sine of x. If it doesn't look like that, then you may not have cleared it. It might be in degrees, but we want it in radians. Go to y equals sine. Come on. All right. And then I would like to look at it a little bit bigger. I'm not going to go and mess with the window at this point. You really only want to go adjust the window on things when you know exactly what you want it to be. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, or you have an idea, not necessarily exactly. Um, so I could play around with it. It's not like it'd be hard to figure out kind of what I would like. But when you are graphing trig stuff, there is a, neat, there is a nice little shortcut. If I go to zoom, look at seven. If you do zoom seven, it's a trig zoom. And so it zooms your graph in to make um, make the domain and range make a little bit more sense, okay? So that you actually have, this is actually going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi now, just like your graph did over there. And if you wanted it to, you know, you can shrink this part a little bit if you wanted to, to be closer to 1, but there's that. So then let's go back to y equals, and I want you to put in cosine of x. And then graph that one. So we already decided that we think that they, um, the domain is all real numbers overall. Right now we have negative 2 pi to 2 pi. The domain is all real numbers. Do you have an idea what the graph looks like past what you can see? Just keeps going, right? Because if you're going to keep going around the circle, you're going to keep getting the same measurements over and over and over again, just like you did on either side of the graph. So these are sinusoidal curves. Okay. Um, and they're also called periodic functions because they have periods. There's a thing that the period is whatever gets repeated. Okay, so when we start looking at these and these trans transformations that we're going to do, we're at what, the, what the period is is one of the important things. What is the part that repeats so that you don't have to, you know, keep doing it over and over again? It's kind of like in a song when they just says repeat the chorus, right? You don't have to write it again because you already know what it is. Same sort of thing. So what what I want to do right here is I want to take the cosine graph and I want to go ahead and translate it so it looks like the sine graph. Right? And um, we already decided it's supposed to be a horizontal translation. What, how far do you think you would have to translate it? Any ideas? Anybody having trouble getting here? Yeah. What do you think you would have to translate? And how, how could I maybe figure that out here? That's why I kind of, kind of wanted to look at them on those, but you can look at it on here too. If you, what? Pi over 4? Any other ideas here? Do you know what the domain is on what the graph is you have here? Yes? And you know specifically, so it's, you're, not, you're not guessing as you're counting on here, but do you see how you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 little hash marks right here? And that goes from 0 to 2 pi. So this is pi halves, right? What is this? Pi, what's half of pi halves? Pi over 4, right? Is that how you came up with it? Or did you just come up with it? We're all good with that? Now, how do we, and we want to translate it to the left. So, or we could translate it to the right. Which way? What would happen if I translate it to the right pi force? Is that going to work? If I translate this to the right pi fourths, that point's going to end up there. Is that going to be the same? No, but I can translate it which way, pi fourths? If I translate it to the left pi fourths, would that work? Yeah, that, and that's what you were thinking about, right? So it depends on which way, if I take this and I translate it to the left, oh, sorry, if I translate it, oh, sorry, if I translate, you were trying to translate sine. I want to translate the cosine function. This is the sine function, and this is the cosine function. Does that make sense to you? So that's your pi force. That's what you were looking at right there. But we want to translate the cosine function over, and we can translate that over to the right pi force. Yeah, if I translate the sine pi force, that's no good. But if I translate cosine, I'm good. Sorry, I was saying that backwards. But do you see how it depends on which one you translate? You can translate either one of them. But if I translate cosine, if I want to translate it to the right, what do I do? Add or subtract? Subtract, because x lies, right? 
So when I go back to y equals, we're going to take this cosine, and instead of at just x, it's going to be x minus what? Pi fourths. Pi fourths. And then when I graph it, Sure seemed like it would work, right? Did it moved it some, right? It didn't move it as much as I wanted to move it. So what should I do now? How much more do you think I need to go? Where was this point right here when we started? It was right here, right? We were trying to move it to the pi fourths. And that didn't really work. So how much does it look like it's kind of halfway in between? So maybe we try pi halves and see what happens. And it'll gra and it graphs them one at a time. It graphs them kind of slower than some of the other calculators. So it looks a little uneventful, but that's what we get right now. What is the the um, angle value for pi halves? Oh, I'm sorry, the degree value for pi halves. 90, okay? So if I have a, let's just think of a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? The cosine of 30 is the same as the sine of what? 60, right? Because they are, um, the complementary angles, it's, they're 90, the, that's why this is 90, because it, it deals with the 90 apart, because they have to be the, the complementary part of that. But all you have to do is shift cosine 90 degrees left or right, and it ends up right on top of cosine. But when you do the minus, we're really just shifting it to the right to make it lay right on top of it. Okay, so a cosine, a sinusoidal curve is any curve that can be written as a sine curve. Can I write any, co, any cosine curve? Could I redo it and make it end up being a sine curve? Because all it is is just the sine and you change it a little bit. Okay, we all good with that? All right, so they're almost identical. They're like best friends that are together. All right, so now I want you to clear out y equals. And I'm going to give you this. And I'm going to show you some things. Uh, some, you may or may not know some of these things on the calculator. I think that y'all are, you're, you're good at being able to let the calculator help you find things. But I want to make sure that sometimes you're, sometimes I think maybe you do it the hard way. And or, and, or what I consider the hard way. You can do it your own way. I don't care. I just want you to know that there are options out there that can make your life a little bit easier. Because these, this table of values here, you're going to have to type, you're going to have to fill all this in. So you really don't want to have to sit there and type in and find the sine of 0, the sine of 30, the sine of 45. You should know what those things are in exact values, but we actually want decimals right now. So that would be a lot, whole lot of typing in. So we're going to do it from the graph. So I want this cleared out so that all you have, we're going to start with sine. So we're going to do sine of x. And then we're going to graph it, okay? But we're going to adjust this just a little bit, okay? First of all, right now we are in radians. This is in degrees. And so if you look at the graph, because you're going to end up graphing it, the restricted domain that you have on this graph for all of these goes from 0 to 360. Okay, so we want to change it to look like this. You adjust a window if you know what it is. And if you have something you're supposed to be graphing, and this is important like on an, on an AV test or anything that's like the LTF type of stuff, if it gives you something like that, go ahead and change your window to this or close enough to this. So we're going to go to our window, and we are going to say we want our x min. I know this goes a little bit negative, but we can just start with 0. It's fine because we don't have to have values to that. We're going to go from 0 to 360. I want my x scale to just go ahead and be 1. That's what the default would be anyway. That one looks all weird because we had the, the trig stuff in there. Then my y, I already know that really it goes from negative 1 to 1. But on my graph, it has a little bit more and a little bit less. And you don't always want it to hug the top. You kind of want to give yourself some room sometimes. So we're going to make the y minimum negative 1.25 and the y maximum 1.25. So that window right there pretty much mirrors what you have here on your piece of paper. Everybody with me? Now when I hit graph, it's going to be a little bit disappointing. 
because that's not what the heck it's supposed to look like, right? But that's because our calculator is in radians and we're doing degrees. But you can also see here, you see how it looks like a, it's a periodic function. It repeats over and over again. What does that kind of look like that you've seen? What? A sound wave, exactly. And that's what sound waves are. They are sinusoidal curves. And, um, and they may not necessarily repeat, but that is what they look like. And that's how, you know, when you talk about music or anything else, how that can all be totally related to the trig stuff. But we want to fix that. So how do I fix this to degrees? Mode, yeah, change the mode. So we're going to change the mode to degrees, and then we'll feel a whole lot better about it. Let me go back to the graph. All right, so there is one period of the function, right? This is just one swoop, and then it's just going to repeat over and over and over again. So I want to get my decimal values from this graph. Now, we're going to use the trace button, but actually tracing and guessing values, bad, bad, bad. Sometimes you actually get lucky and it'll fall right where you want it, but it doesn't always, all right? And you can kind of get a good estimate. But we want it to give it to us exact, and we don't want to have to do too much work, right? George, last warning, you'll ever get from me there. Um, I'm going to hit the trace button, but I'm not actually going to trace. Just hit trace so the little spider pops up. And I want the sign of the first thing I have in there is zero. So I'm going to hit zero, and do you see how it just changes to x equals zero? And then I'm going to hit enter. And the sign of zero is zero, which you already knew, I know. But now put that in the graph. And then don't touch anything else on the calculator yet. You don't have to hit trace every single time. You got that answer. Now you're going to hit 30, and it pops up, and you hit enter. And it's 0.5. And then again, I'm not hitting trace again. Then from here, I just do 45, enter. Does that make sense to you? And it can go a whole lot faster than you retyping things a bazillion times. Right? Any, did I lose anybody with that explanation? Okay. So do you see how to make that easy for yourself? Right? You're not going to have to go in and change the window again because it'll work for all three graphs. You want to get them all filled in. Okay? And then I want you to pause for just a second because I know now you're all like, oh, and you're like filling in your chart. So just pause because this will go fast and you'll be fine. Everybody look up here. When you actually look at what I gave you as you're doing this, when you go to graph them, okay, this is important. Everybody look up here. These, this, like where it says 15 degrees and 30 degrees, the degree measure is right to the right of the actual mark. So that 30 degrees right there, that point right there, I know that's not the point you would graph, but that's your 30 degrees. Does that make sense to you? And you clearly are going to have to just estimate, but think about what would make sense. If this is one, this is one half, or yeah, this is a half, so this is 0.75, and you just estimate the best you can to get the points on there. It may not look perfect and beautiful, and then just do the best you can to sketch the curves. Okay? Does that make sense to you? Does everybody understand what to do? You can get these points easily. Everybody understand how to use the calculator to the best of your... You can use the table for something like this, but then you have to mess with the table set because it's probably not going to change. This is, these aren't even a consistent change. And then if it just changes by one, you have to scroll forever. So there are other options if you'd rather do the table, whatever. I just want to make sure that you know how to do this because this could be very helpful in, in a lot of things. Okay? We good? All right. So get those marked out. Get those done. And... In the end, I also want you to put the radian degrees up here, or radian degrees, the radian measures. So this would still be zero, this would be pi six, and I want the, especially when we're flipping back and forth from degrees and radians, you gotta be able to tie those two together in your brain a little bit better. Yes, sir? Oh, three decimal places, thank you. Always three decimal places, and that'll get you close enough. 